Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Slumdark Film. In this video, we're gonna create a couple of animated icons. Now, I've done a couple of these tutorials in the past, uh, but I wanted to refresh this uh, tutorial series and create these dynamic icons. Now, there's a lot of icons out there that you can create, it's almost limitless. So what I suggest doing before you create an icon is to search up whatever you're looking to create. So like this clock, for example, I would even just search up animated icon, or sorry, a uh, vector graphic of a clock and see what elements went into that. And then as you really look into these things, you see that everything's broken down into shapes. So it's very easy to recreate icons and even do them in After Effects. I would suggest doing these in Adobe Illustrator, but we want to do this in After Effects because you know we would have full control over the animation. So let's go ahead and you know let's get started here. We already have a composition called Tutorial. So let's come over here. So let's go to the top and let's grab the Ellipse tool and let's hold down Shift on our keyboard to draw a perfect circle. And that's looking good. And then we can go to the Align tab, which is over here. And we can center this up. If you don't see Align tab, go up to Window, Align. And we want to change the fill to white or whatever color that you want to have. And we click on Stroke over here. And we can set this to black. And we can set the pixel count to perhaps around 13 or so. So now we have the outline of our clock here. And let's go ahead and create the uh, arrows right here that indicate you know each hour. And it's very easy to do this. We don't we don't have to duplicate anything. So let's go ahead and grab the rectangle tool. Uh, let's turn off the stroke by clicking the word stroke. Set it to none. Uh, click on fill, and we'll set this to black. And we'll come over here, and we will draw out a rectangle like so, maybe nice and small. Yeah, it's looking good. All right. And what we wanna do is make sure that this is in the center of our composition. So we'll go to the line tab and horizontally center align this. And this is in the center of everything. And what we can do from here is we can go to add and we can add a repeater. And we'll come here to the transform repeater one, set the position X to zero. And then we'll go to the rotation. And now we can start to rotate this, right? So what we need to do is we need to have a total of 12 copies. So go to copies and type in 12. And now we can go to the rotation and just set this to where everything will be perfectly aligned. So basically what we're looking for is, you know, the bottom handle here to be at six o'clock, right? And therefore our rotation is at 30 degrees. So just something you need to experiment with and get that correct. So now we have all 12 indicators of the time in here and we can rename this layer to lines and the previous layer to base. And now we gotta create the actual hands, right? So what we can do is grab the rounded rectangle tool this time, and we'll wanna start this in the middle. Uh, so bring up the title safes, and you can bring that up by going onto this little crosshair and click on title action safes. Um, but we'll come over here, and we'll try to draw a nice long hand here. And the big thing we wanna do is we want to make sure that this is in the middle of our comp, like right here, right at the bottom of the cross here, that uh, vertice. And then we wanna grab the pan behind tool, which is at the top. And we'll put this anchor point right over uh, the middle vertice here. So now this will rotate uh, <clears throat> from the middle of the composition. And now we gotta create one more. So we'll, we'll duplicate this layer and we'll hit R on our keyboard for rotation. And we'll rotate this to about five o'clock. And then we need to shorten down the hand. So what we can do is uh, just grab our selection tool and we'll move this in and that should be good. And then we'll kind of do our best to make sure these are aligned just a little bit better. It's okay if it's not perfect, just make sure that uh, anchor point is in the middle of that crosshair there. And therefore we should be good. So now we have our small hand, our large hand. And from here, what we can do now is, you know, bring up the rotation. You see this is going to rotate perfectly in that center and same thing with the big hand. So we go ahead and add that animation right now to get started. So uh, we'll add a keyframe for both rotation here and we'll move forward in time to maybe like five seconds. And we can take the small hand and we'll move it over by one hour. So we go to six o'clock and then we take the big hand and we'll want this to rotate all the way around for 60 minutes. So that should be good. So now we have a pretty much an animated clock. Now let's say we want to animate this in. So we created all these layers here inside of After Effects. But let's say we wanted to animate these layers in. So let's go to the base of the clock. And I think it would be cool to do a radial wipe since this is a circle and it kind of moves in a way of a radial wipe. So go to transition 
and we'll grab radial wipe and let's set this to the wipe to counterclockwise and we can increase the uh, transition completion to 100% add a keyframe for it move forward by maybe almost a second and bring this down to zero uh, percent and make both these keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting f9 on your keyboard and now we have the base of our clock coming in which is cool and then we'll do our lines up here so we'll go to that layer go to the repeater one and let's add a keyframe for the number of copies and let's move this keyframe forward in time and let's the copies down to zero so now what's going to happen is that each copy is going to come on like this and we can, of course, move these keyframes over a little bit so <clears throat> they'll kind of come on as this clock is moving on as well. So maybe we'll do it like that. Cool. And make both of these keyframes easy, easy keyframes. And now we have that animated. And then we do the small and big hand. And what I would like to do with this is make these 3D layers. So let's turn on 3D layers for both of the hands here and toggle switches and modes if you don't see uh, the 3D layer icon and hit R on your keyboard for rotation. And we'll animate the Y rotation of this. So Maybe we'll have the hands come on right here. Let's add a keyframe for Y rotation. And we'll move both of these keyframes forward in time. And we'll set the Y rotation to 90 degrees. So now we'll see that it kind of just comes in from a skewing perspective. And I think that's really interesting. Uh, so we, of course, make all these keyframes easy, easy keyframes as well. So now we have this very beautiful animated clock icon. And hopefully you can take techniques from this clock to create your own um, sort of icons as well. And the reason why I am doing this tutorial is because I do animated icons for a lot of client projects all the time. It's like almost every motion graphic project has some sort of icon in it. That's what it feels like when it's just like 2D motion graphics. So that's the reason why I'm doing this because I think it's a nice little intro to that. But let's go ahead and create another icon and we'll do the headphones. And I'm not going to go ahead and animate this one, but I want to show you how we can be creative with the design principle here. So let's go ahead all right, and before we create our headphones, make sure to turn on motion blur for your layers here and come over here and we'll pre-compose this clock uh, by going up to layer pre-compose, so layer pre-compose. And then we can just move this out of the way for now. Cool, and I'll go ahead and lock that layer. And now let's go ahead and create the headphones. So let's go ahead and break down these elements, right? So we have this sort of U-shape um, you know, headset here and then we have the actual, like, I don't know what these are called, like earmuffs, earbuds, I don't know. But as you can see, they're just basic shapes, right? So you see this is a rounded rectangle. This is, you know, a rectangle. And this is just basically a nice little stroke, right? So let's go ahead and create that. Uh, we, we can grab the pen tool. And what we'll do is click a point, And we'll come here to the top. We'll hold down shift. And the thing that we're looking at here is the arc of, you know, the vertices here, right? And we'll come down here and add another point, and we'll just try to match this up the best as we can. And that should be cool. And click on the word fill and turn that off. And click on the word stroke and set this to solid color. And we can change this color to maybe like we'll do a. Yeah, I think that's cool. We'll do like a, any any color will work. I'm not gonna say that specifically. Um, and we need to definitely adjust. This is obviously not good. So go ahead and move the vertices over as you see fit, um, and just try to make this work. We'll bring both these vertices up by a touch. So, you know, that should be about good. Um, and just, you know, definitely do your best. This is why I definitely think Illustrator is the way to go on this. And I definitely have a tutorial on how to do that. Um, and I'll definitely link that. But for the most part, you just want to match this up as best as you can. And things will look good. And we'll go ahead and increase the stroke by a little bit. And then we'll go into the uh, shape layer here. Go into the contents. Go into the shape one. Go to the path one. Sorry. Go to the stroke one. Go to the stroke one. And we'll set the... Uh, line cap from butt cap to a round cap and you see that these round out and they look good right all right and let's go ahead and grab the rounded rectangle tool and make sure to set the fill to orange and turn off the stroke and we'll come over here and we'll draw out our cushion for our i guess for our ears would go i don't know what's called exactly uh but we'll come over here put that nicely in place uh if we need to make some side changes that might be a little too big Cool. And then we'll come over here, duplicate it again, and we'll move it forward. And this time we'll just scale this down completely. And we'll do like another cushiony here. And then we go to this rectangle two, we go to the rectangle path, and we can change the roundness to maybe zero. So as it's a little bit more of a defined shape. 
And then we come over here, we can duplicate the shape layer, go up to layer, transform, and we can do flip horizontal. And now we can just move this back into place on this side. And now we have, you know, a nice little headset icon. Now let's say we want to simulate some, you know, audio coming out of the headphones here. So basically all it is again is a nice stroke. So we can grab the pen tool and we'll just draw out a very thin, I guess, semicircle, if you will. And then we'll turn on, turn off the fill, turn on the stroke. And we'll bring the stroke count way down. And we'll just have to refine the middle vertices here. And if you have any trouble selecting the vertices, go into the shape layer, go into the contents, go into the shape one, go to the path one, select the path. And you can hold down shift on your keyboard and kind of select points. And we'll come over here and we'll definitely, uh, you know, push this out a little bit more. So you can grab the pen tool and hold down alt on your keyboard. And you can see you can easily play with the vertices here. So, yeah, I mean, it's mostly a little bit of playing around when you get into this, you know, stage. But for the most part, go to the stroke and we'll set this to a round cap as well. And now we have, you know, this little outline of noise. And we can come over here. We can, you know, select the shape one, duplicate it by going up to edit, duplicate. And we can move it out. And, you know, we come over here and move this out by a little bit. And we, of course, go into the Shape 2 Transform. And we can scale this up so it's a little bit bigger. And actually, I shouldn't have even moved it over. Yeah, so we have a little bit of noise there. And then, of course, we can duplicate this layer. Go to Layer, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. And then move this over in space. And, of course, you can animate these all separately or anything like that. I'm not going to do the animation on this because it would be repetitive. But... So we just created two icons without much trouble here. So hope you guys found this video insightful. If you guys did, please drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, I hope you have a good day.